that later. So um, timer starts when uh, we gain control of the character. So I'll hit it for you. And go. Hey, that should be able to work that right. So yeah, this is a pretty cool action RPG from 2002, made by Arcane, the same guys who made Dishonored and Dark Messiah from Modern Magic. Um, the most unique uh, feature of this game is that you can cast sp uh, spells by drawing runes in the air, like uh, your mouse. Kind of dark, but that should be fine. Uh. Yeah, this is like a kind of a unique fantasy world in that you're you're all underground because the surface is like all destroyed by radiation or something. I can't remember like that. Yeah. Something like that. <coughs> you don't really find out exactly what's happened, but uh, for some reason everyone is underground. And um, yeah, this speedrun is kind of slow paced at the start, and uh, well, um, it's not really a super exciting speed game, but it's an interesting routing speed game because on a casual playthrough it takes a real long time, but uh, you can kind of just do the main quest and skip everything in interesting ways. So here's the exciting melee combat of the game, kind of like in Morrowind. For this first fight, uh, you don't really do it, you know, like any damage. This uh, Our friend here is doing almost all of the work. <laughs> the limping old man kind of carries you. Yeah. We got him, yes. Who is we? That screen tearing is something else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know something, something special. Yep. Okay, so. So, we picked up two ruins earlier. Uh, it doesn't really let us cast anything good yet, because we only have, like, throw and fire. Or something like that. Um, all of these ruins mean something. So you combine the different runes to create spells. So we're gonna use lock picking. Okay, good. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, lock, that is, uh, because we put all of our skill points into lock picking just to open that door. Oops, I think I put too many points <coughs> in Tanner item, but that should be fine. All right. So we had to lock pick that door so that we can get the projectile uh, which lets us cast magic missiles and fireballs which will be our main uh, main spells for the first half of the game our, our magic overall is extremely overpowered in this game and you can get fireball really early which is super super useful for killing stuff at the beginning Yes, and um, so you can uh, pre-cast up to three spells. So what I have done here is uh, memorized three fireballs for when I have to fight. And uh, coming up is very imp important NPC. We have to visit him. Here, here he is. Can we get some Franker Z's in the chat? Right, let's see if we can get it. Okay, we got it. Good. <laughs> he brings good luck. Uh, and this is the barmaid. That was the barmaid. <laughs> the barmaid. Now all the humans uh, in the main city hate us. Because they know we killed the barmaid. But she was actually evil. Probably. She was part of a cult, I think. Maybe. Probably. Well, where else would she have the key 
to an evil temple with cultists in it. That's true. Here's a cultist. Sometimes the um, drawing can be very finicky. One second, I think uh, I have to put on V-Sync. Uh, the frame rate is too high on this computer for <laughs> casting spells, uh, oh. so one sec. I love PC speedrunning. I actually for just forgot to check this. <clears throat> yeah, this this game, as you said, is from like 2002. Uh, it it kind of relies on not <laughs> ridiculous frame rates. So when you try to play at super high frame rates, you end up yeah the just not being able to draw your runes. The detection for drawing the runes is like all fucked up. Okay, that should do it. Yeah, sorry about that. Um. Let's see if this works. Oh, this guy's not supposed to be here yet, but that's fine. We're supposed to kill him anyway. Fireball's really good. Yes. So, okay, good. Uh, it might work. Yeah, yeah. It should work now. Um, so here's a fun part of the speedrun because I can't really control it if I live or die here. There's a lich that uh, spawns there, and he can kill me if he wants. Like, kills you instantly as he spawns. Also, this jump is stupidly hard because of how janky the jumping is. And you just got it first try. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed <laughs> to be able to jump there. Uh, the, the things that you're standing on there are like super slippery, and if you're sliding downwards at all, you just fall. So, actually, not falling and making that jump is really dumb. And you also have to hog the back wall so your distance the platform is uh, as long as it can be. So here's this demon and you're like level 2. You're not supposed to be here for a long ass time. Oops. Oh, oh we didn't one-shot you. That's oh, surprising. That's, that's nice. Uh, so you're supposed to the speed and we just kind of jump up here with the awful monkey, jumping awful jumping physics. It also it looks like he goes faster whenever he jumps, and that that is true. But when you land, you kind of stop, so it's overall just not faster okay. to jump. Then we hope that the demon doesn't reach us. Just kind of cast magic missiles on it. Casting super fast here doesn't really matter because he's gonna run out of mana anyway. So yeah, we're gonna have to use a, at least one mana. Yeah. There's one mana. I have to use at least one mana potion. Oh, those movies. So yeah, the there you go. There we go. Good fight. Good fight. <laughs> yeah. So um, we save this lady and she runs away. And. Um, Alright, so um, whenever you're like going from place to place, you gotta think about what spells you will be needing in the next encounter. And that's kind of easy to remember in the first half of the game, because it's fireball, 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 fireball. <laughs> it's a very versatile spell. It lets you do this. Oh. Alright, well that guy kind of... The goblin kind of screwed that up. Uh, if you hug the gate and then shoot a fireball, uh, the gate opens instantly and the goblin behind it dies. But if a tiny goblin follows you uh, to that room, the big goblins behind the gate realize this and they, they kind of aggro you and they attack you. 
And you have to wait for the gate to open then. Wait a minute. That's two rocks. I'm, re I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> Alright, which rock did I forget? Uh. Uh. This is not fine. I mean, you have to come back here later anyway, right? Don't worry. We found a new stretch for this game. Or also, he just climbed up to the... Yeah, alright, so... We found a new stretch to this speed game after I submitted it to SA, and um... They saved quite a bit of time. And I didn't lower the estimate. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's for the best. We'll be perfectly on schedule. We'll be okay. fine. Everything is fine. I'm just gonna kill this guy again. And think. Okay. I have two rocks. <laughs> There's one rock. Uh, Got the lich one for sure. Yeah. Or did I? I hope I got that one, because that one's the most annoying one to get. Did you get the one <sighs> up the stairs? I won't there's one at the start, and there's one at the cultist. I don't think he got the cultist one. Okay. Is this the... Okay. Emergency exit. I've never had to use this door, so I'm not really sure. Okay. Is this the right way to go? Yeah, okay. Um, Checking the chest. The chest is not. Uh, yeah, chest's empty, so it's not that one. Okay. Yeah. So these these items are things that you need at the very end of the game. <coughs> you can't beat the game without these. Uh, that's it. Is it this guy? This guy. Is it, is it that guy? Oh, he didn't die to a fireball. Uh oh. <laughs> if he can just randomly decide to not die, it's can't cast this spell. a little bit strange. Okay, uh, could you... Wait, he cast seal! Fuck! Oh, it might have been like... When I, like, um... Restarted the game. Okay, now he's blocking the game. <laughs> Alright, so when I turned off V-Sync, the enemy position was way off when I loaded oh, the yeah, game. that's why. I was like, not sure which uh, cultists I killed. The rock is always on the same guy. Do you guys have a moment for donation? Yeah, sure. Go for donation. This is uh, a right. train wreck anyway. <laughs> Alright, we have $5 by Colin87. Hey PJ, uh, uh, Ox, good luck on the run. Hope you discard four and hate dog, kill the animals. And we have another $5 donation from Fur Ether saying, I love PJ Oxt. He's Can definitely Cosmic guy? Brain. Alright, um. We got the rock, it's fine. Alright, we got the rock, everything's fine. Um. Yeah. So I need five of these, but three of them are from this temple. And without them, you can't beat the game, or you can't uh, start the final boss fight. He also picked up a Ring of Regeneration. Point. Yeah, it's uh, <coughs> or oh, that, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, I, we, we got it. I guess that's what got me confused because I killed like a different cultist and I picked up like a ring and a potion, so he had like really similar items to the cultist that normally stands there and has the Akbarok. Yeah, it's like the that kind of messed me up. Yeah, since, since we're really low level and we don't put any points into like endurance. We just have really low health, which means a Ring of Regeneration, which just increases your health regen, actually is really useful for the run. Yeah, it's gonna... Any hit we take is gonna, like, get regenerated back real fast. It stops being kind of useful when you reach the first city, because that's where we get more health potions. So that's usually what's supposed to happen when you blast the get with the fireball. The door opens instantly or you can just walk through it. Alright, 
so set up that one NPC spawns. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you're supposed to go to like a ruined keep and find a dying NPC who tells you about the main quest. But we didn't go there. Uh, we just walked past it and went to the bar. So the game is like, wait, you do, you don't know about the main quest. We we've gotta tell him about it. So they teleport that NPC to this spot. Sometimes, we most of the time. Okay. If he doesn't spawn here, then it's kind of like soft lock. I don't really have any backup saves, so it's a good thing he uh, spawned there. But I think it's mostly when you like do like you restart run after you've reached this point already. The game has kind of problems with emptying its memory, I guess. But yeah, as I said, um, all of the humans in this town will now hate us because we we started the fight in the bar. <laughs> yeah, you're you're supposed to come to this area like pretty early yeah. and meet all the townsfolk and everything, but since we're the barmaid, they just kind of want to kill you. Gotcha. We have we have some six strats for one. All right, so these guards. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be having some problems with pathfinding. Uh, here's, oh, there's a kid, there's a guard, oh, the there's a shopkeeper, and guard just left. <laughs> we, need, uh, we need this key to unlock all of the chests in this shop. Uh, we're going to stock up on magic runes so we can cast more different spells. Mana potions, new set of lock picks, a uh, oh, save the children, uh, and then more for that. And then we have like uh, a pickaxe so we can dig. Right, we only need like one set of lock pick or yeah, set of tools so. Because we are gonna save scum the last door anyway. Like there's two doors that we need to lockpick in the entire game, and we put all of our initial skill points into lockpicking. So here's a snake lady coming up. This is one of the major like quest NPCs that I'm gonna talk to, and she's gonna like tell you some quests. Oh, no. oh, no! All right, she needed to die because she had a key to this door. All right, this is a different oh major quest NPC that's supposed to tell you. He stuff. had to die. He had another key to this chest. Did he have to die? Uh, maybe. I think so. All right, we don't need that key anymore. Sorry. Okay, so now we got a bunch of different runes, so we can cast more spells. And we killed some NPCs, so we leveled up, and we're gonna become even more cosmic brain. Maximum brain. Okay, we don't actually need that anymore. Um, okay, let's see, where do we go? Uh, activate portal. Okay, uh, yeah, I remember now. So. We're gonna go activate a portal to this. Um, hello? Okay, he didn't die. Hello? Oh, I guess he will regret that. I'm gonna regret this. Okay, bye. So, um, one of the runes we picked up is Spasium, which lets us cast Open Portal. Uh, it's very handy in backtracking in this game, and there's even in the speedrun, there's a little bit of backtracking you have to do. The portals are basically the fast travel system. They're like fixed points in the levels that you can teleport between if you have this spell. Which, the snake lady is supposed to teach it to you, but uh, we can just kind of figure it out. Yeah, I'm not sure if the spell actually shows up in your spell book. Uh, I don't think it does. Yeah. I, was, I think I was really confused about that casually and had to look it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, the snake lady teaches it to you in like a cutscene. Yeah, it's, it's played in the cutscene, it's never actually recorded. So you just, if you weren't paying attention, too bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, so in general this game has more spells than they tell you about in the spellbook. Um, you can combine different runes to try to figure out different spells, like there's Mega Vitae, which is heal, so it's like Mega is increase, and Vitae is health, so you combine those to get heal. Uh, but then there's like a hidden spell in the, sp uh, in the game that uh, is like decrease health, which makes a damaging aura around you. It's a pretty useful spell. So it used to be the main way to kill hard enemies like uh, the demon in the temple and uh, a couple of other... Like you killed last boss with it uh, in the old speedrun strats, but we found a, oops, found a new spell for that now. So yeah, basically the, this game was routed by a bunch of YouTubers uh, who just posted a run and then I kind of copied the run and just made a minor adjustment to it and it's gone, it's gone back and forth and apparently random YouTube comments know more about this game than I do because like all of the newest strats are like YouTube comments telling me that hey, there's a spell called Life Drain that kills the final boss in 10 seconds. Spoilers. So once we get that, uh, it's like the only damaging spell we're gonna use. Awesome. That was the the person we rescued from the evil demon. She, she was supposed to go, do, you know, do more plot stuff, but but she had a key to this place, so we need that. Of course, these people are all pissed off, but. We have a harm, which is the, the damage health spell. It's, it's pretty good. Just like that. It's too sturdy for me to break. This yeah, is a merchant. Break it just like that. You can just kind of take all of his stuff. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, so the harm spell is like unholy magic or something. I don't know why they're afraid of it, but they are. Uh, they have a chance of just like, running around kind of scared looking. Sometimes they... Um, they're not as afraid of it, and they just attack you, but most of the time they just run away. As long as you keep this harm spell active. Which <coughs> is really handy, because it, it lets you just run past everything and grab a main quest item. There's a haste scroll. It casts a really weak version of the haste spell. Pretty soon uh, we'll actually have access to haste, and it's, it's a really good spell. Yeah, we're gonna get the Movis rune, which lets us cast that normally in just a bit. Uh, we also came here to pick up that ring that is one of two uh, required plot rings that we need to beat the game. Yeah. Into pre-cast some fireballs, because I have a feeling these guards are gonna be blocking me. Sometimes you can get really, really unlucky, and like right. every single guard will just stand. Yeah, in they're the just gonna pile up there, and you have to like fight through ten guards. But we we're pretty lucky this time. All right, so we stole a bunch of stuff from that uh, uh, chest from that shopkeeper, and we're gonna use pretty much all of it. Um. The speed scroll was just for like a tiny speed boost. Uh, the slow time we're gonna use later for some gimmicks. And there is lightning projection, which we don't really need, but it's worth a lot. And uh, the spell field is late for removing magical barriers, which is handy later. And levitate. Uh, might if I don't need it for money here, I might save it for uh, backup strats for the final boss. Oh, look, another dog. Okay. Uh, so this guy is really good. He has disable trap. Uh, we need to get rid of levitate to afford it. Yeah, we we have to buy a disable trap so that we can steal his stuff. Oh, he didn't die. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes he does in one fireball, not always. 
He has the key to his chest like all the other shopkeepers, but this shopkeeper was smart enough to put a trap on it. So we we buy the dispel trap from him and then use it to rob everything he has. Brilliant strategy. Yes. Um, so there's a couple things we need. We need reveal and enchant object. Oops, we don't need that one. A uh, bit of inventory management, and I'm going to be a bit slow with this shop because normally, normally you just grab the stuff and run. It's a marathon run, and I don't want to be in the final area without enchant object because that's that's going to suck. So now we have Mobis, we can cast haste, which just increases your speed by I don't know some stupid amount. And also, you can stack it to increase it by even more. Yes. So it's, it's pretty good. Also, Movis Rune lets us cast Move Life, which is Life Drain. So it's like, increase... Oh wait, no, no, yeah. That's right. That moves life from enemies to you. So we kill this snake lady boss. And she's dead. Yeah, that we life drain there is yeah. super fast. We take the main quest item and run away. Some of these snake ladies can be really dangerous. They, some of them, well, most of them will randomly know how to cast life drain, which will instantly kill you, which is pretty cool. The new route lets us cast a bunch of extra haste and just keep it up at all times. Because there's. Uh, using life drain is way more mana efficient than the old methods. And way faster. So. We, okay. We solved a puzzle by shooting a wall. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is just a big puzzle area that we quickly go through. So there's like. I think you're supposed to shoot from this side, you hit it from the wrong side. Uh, you cast reveal so you can see the correct switch to pull here to open this door. And then there's, there's a bunch of like weird... Oh yeah, this is just a combination, you have to hit it in the, in the right one, in the right way. Uh, there's some weird like non-Euclidean geometry that you have to walk through. I, get, I don't know, it's like proving that you're worthy of getting the other ring, I think, or something like that. Some lore stuff. Right, I had to concentrate there. Um, it's a puzzle that is always the same. Like the solution is always going to be the same. So if you just remember it, you can always do it the same way. Um, here's some shadow guy. That's life turn again. He's dead. Uh, haste gets removed every time you go into an, a cutscene or a area transition. Hold on, didn't I press this button? I'm pretty sure I pressed this button. So this um, whole labyrinth is like illusions and stuff. No, oh, it turned you around and teleported you. And there's. The game is actually really dark on my screen. <laughs> so I'm kind of struggling now to see anything. Sorry. Uh, map, I guess. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Okay, let's uh, precast life drain here and put this thing here. And grab the main the screen. Second one. Alright, you always level up at that point, so you can just spend all of the mana you have on haste. Which is good, because you need a bunch for killing those. And then this snake lady died of something. I think you're supposed to find her corpse. So there's like a plot note item on her corpse, but... 
if you just run to that spot, you just kind of see her dying there. Alright, so this is kind of a long run. So we put two hastes on. Whatever, let's put three. Why not? Now just kidding, let's put four. <laughs> But now we don't have any mana. So slow at the start. Um, so this big worm thing used to be kind of annoying because you had to cast four-ish fireballs to kill it. I think it's dying. Hello? Are you dead? There it goes. Okay. I thought I heard its death scream. Also, I'm stuck inside him. Right. Do you have a moment for a donation? Yeah, sure. All right, we got five dollars from Mr. GPN saying got paid. So if I was going to donate, it has to be now at 3 a.m. Good luck, PJ Ox. To the runner's choice of incentive, he ha if he has one, I don't. I don't know. I don't know any of the incentives. Uh, the Valley Field of View patch. Oh yeah, good. Uh, of course, yeah, do that one. All right, now we're in the uh, the old Dwarven ruins, <clears throat> and there's a scary big black beast. Oh no. Yes, this guy is invulnerable to every normal form of attack. There's also like some sort of weird anti-magic field in this area, so we can't cast anything at all. It just instantly fails. So we get to we get to have a nice casual walk through this area. Yeah, the first part of the speed run is like kind of slow. Just walk around collecting spells. Then you get haste. And then you just run really fast through the mines killing everything again. And then you reach this point and you have to walk again, so it's kind of depressing. What we can do is prepare for uh, the next area by pre-casting the spells we're going to need. So there's like only one way to kill this uh, thing that's chasing us. It's by putting it into lava. So we have to first uh, enable that lever and for that we need to like lure the beast into this room. Push that lever. Be nice beast. Oh. Oh, okay. wow. oh man, he was fast. He chased us pretty hard there. <laughs> he, he generally gets stuck at the bottom of the stairs, so that was, uh, he was mad. Yeah, sometimes he even gets, uh oh, send help. Oh. <laughs> yeah, typical. But yeah, for some reason these stairs are kind of glitched. You can't... Hmm, I don't know, is this a glitch? Because if you just walk up here, you get stuck. Might be a glitch, man. Might be. Okay. And, uh, hmm, I don't know, is that a glitch? No, I that's, think... that's, not, that's perfectly uh, fine. Uh, it's, it's, don't die, man. Uh, Alright. No, no, we're fine. All right, we made it. And the lava kills the beast. Okay, that was pretty scary. <laughs> Good job. So now that that's done, we can uh, do our actual objective here. Uh, is crafting a mithril something? Like we need it's a sword. It's always mithril a sword. sword. Is there a, a few different? Things I think it's need? either a big sword or a small sword. Right. I think we're gonna opt with the small one because it needs less mithril chunks to create. Yeah, at the start of the game we picked up a sword, and we're gonna maybe use it here. We're at the very beginning of the game we pick this up, and finally we'll have some good old melee combat again. Yeah, maybe. Because sometimes these rats block you, and you have to fight your way through. You know, preemptively. Alright, he didn't block me, but gonna die anyway, because he might block me on the way back. Mm. 
Gonna have to go way out of our way here to pick up some mithril ore. And normally you're supposed to stick it into this thing that like transports it back to the, the forge, but turns out we can just carry it and it's a little bit faster. Yeah, for some reason they built a teleporter that only teleports chunks of ore and nothing else. It's very efficient. But it requires uh, a power stone or a power crystal and it takes a bit of time to collect the fourth one. So we can... Uh, normally you have to hold down the mouse button to carry an item. But... Or carry this item, rather. We can uh, sheath or unsheath your sword and let go of the mouse button and keep fighting. Which is kind of handy, because... Uh, we don't have to pick up this ore after we kill some rats. Do you have time for a donation? Yeah, sure. We got a dollar from Potato Ninja saying, Guys, if everyone in chat donates a dollar, we'll be able to free Monka S. So there is an incentive to free the Monka S uh, emote. We're, uh, we're at 550 at right now out of 4,200. So if you donate, and we can free Monka S. Alright, so um, here's like an ore press, or crusher, something, I don't know. We use one of these uh, power sources to power this device. Also, don't jump into ladders, or you're just gonna glitch out and uh, fall down again. Trigger the crusher. Get two pieces of ore. Yeah, this is like the most boring part of the run because you have to backtrack uh, back and forth and do this in exactly this order because you need like you need the keys for this door from the other room. You can't really go here before you kill the black beast, and you can't make the sword before you mine the ore. But don't worry, we're gonna go fast right after we leave the dwarven mines. Yeah, making this sword is like not very intuitive. It's like an in-game book that tells you how to do it, but it doesn't really explain how to use any of these devices. They're really strange and confusing. You have to have certain items placed in specific positions. So we put the mithril bar on top, the mold on the side, and now we have a mithril sword. And we can get out of here. Let's see, we have open portal, we have life drain. And the next thing we need is speed. Yeah, so now we're going to head back to the start, to the first portal that we opened. And we're going to actually use these two main quest rings, Krahos and Zohark, to destroy a meteor. Because we need some meteor powder to enchant this sword. We need a couple of other things too. Um, you need a dragon egg and a... Uh, scroll of enchant weapon or item. Yeah, the main plot is we need some sort of like super magical item to actually damage the evil god thing that's currently trying to destroy. Feels so nice to go fast. I just wanna go fast. God, don't stack it too high. Oh. Careful. Alright, so Sorry, uh, we should have probably turned up the gamma uh, before this run, because this game is really dark here. Yeah, these guys. I 
forgot about them. So we are just gonna spam a bunch of haste here, and that's about it. Uh, we're gonna have to cast it a lot because there's so many cutscenes and area transitions. Here's a cool cutscene. You can move your camera around while this happens, so it's like. But you have to kind of uh, orient yourself so that you're looking at the eater powder. Don't think. We need a couple of more haste. And now we're gonna use the slow time scroll. Because there is a weird bug here that lets you jump really far if you have haste and slow time on. But if you don't remove the slow time, it's gonna screw you with your movement. So, turn it off. And here's a bit of unintended platforming, just like the uh, in the temple. And here we use a torch that we picked up in the first area of the game. Just so that we can skip casting a fireball on that thing. Now we have a, a dragon. Alright, so this dragon has some eggs and we need one of them to make our sword good. And the old strat was to just steal an egg and hope that you don't get stun locked. But the new strat is to cast paralysis on the dragon and that breaks the AI. So you just take them and go away. Just kind of freeze the dragon, take it and just leave. So we use the egg on the saber somehow. I don't know what. Sprinkle some yolk on it. Yep. And then we cast enchant item on it. And now we can go and beat the game. Alright, so we teleport back here. And we can guess that we cast some haste. Yeah, good idea actually about the looking at the map, because that that screen was completely blank. So here we are going to use the Dispel field we picked up earlier because there's a magic barrier blocking the last area. Yeah, so at this point we have the Magical Sword, which we have equipped, and we have uh, all of the rock, well, all the other rock, so we can just kind of head straight towards the ending of the game. Okay, these guys are kind of strong, but Life Drain is a good spell. Life Drain is stronger. Alright, so uh, it's important to remember to pick up that rock before going here. Got enough mana potions to go fast. So we use haste to get to this door, turn it off, and turn on life drain. Alright. And we trigger this trap by walking over it. Avoid it. And use that the candle on the skull to reach the final Akba stone. It's close. Alright, so you can place one in each thingy. So that's what these stones were for, you need them to open up the door to the final boss. 
which we have now. Yep. So time is coming up pretty soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. This boss, this boss can be kind of a bully if he wants to. You come here seconds too late. This boss can also be kind of loud, loud and, and bright. <laughs> bright. Just, just a small warning. So we're gonna do a quick save, quick load. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, that was oh. gonna be death. <laughs> he cast life drain on us immediately. All right, this is good. He's casting. Lightning, which doesn't really do anything. Could be good. Oh, yes. Alright, good fight at least. Yeah, that's good. How did you? Oh, look, our <laughs> pants were destroyed in the battle. <laughs> wow. You don't need pants to kill a god. 